Hey guys, a brand new Tularia Sting MX-5 Pro just leaked. Everything's out, everything except for the price, but I do have my friends that got me the price and all the rest of the information's been leaked too, all the images and specs. So I'm gonna tell you them right now. Here's the brand new Tularia Sting MX-5 Pro is what it's called. This is the image of it. As you can see, it's got the same exact frame as the old one. If you didn't like the old frame, well, you are screwed, my friend. But what is different is the brakes, the battery, the motor, the transmission system, the controller's a little bit tuned differently, and those are the main things. So let me go through the highlights right here. It's 72 volt, 40 amp hour battery, which is gonna be huge, awesome, and super fast high acceleration, completely improved brake system. The brakes on this thing are way bigger than any bike that I've seen so far in this class. They're more like motocross brakes. They have three millimeter wide discs, which are a lot bigger and they have a lot more robust lines and brake levers. Another thing with the brakes, is they have a regen braking lever. So on my Suron, I like to completely turn off regen braking because I think it's stupid and it ruins the whole biking experience. But if you can turn that off and then press a lever when you want the regen to stop you, that's nice. Adjustable suspension that's tuned for off-road performance. It looks kind of like the old suspension, but maybe it's a little better, I don't know. It comes with the good foot pegs, like the CNC ones that we all put on our Surons that are like mandatory because it makes the bike so much better. You cannot ride the stock foot pegs. So you don't have to waste 50 bucks on those. A color display, that's good. That's obviously way better than the Suron one, which I have. CNC machined wheel hubs with reinforced spokes. That's good so you don't snap any spokes off when you're going off jumps and stuff. Cause I do, everything I do is mostly off-road. I don't do huge off-roading stuff, but it's all off-road, hitting bumps, hitting rocks, you know, going off small jumps. So I don't want any of these things to snap. Finally has a headlight switch. Uh, the most annoying thing on my bike was when I didn't have a headlight switch and the light was always on. Uh, something that's going to be crazy is the internal reinforced gearbox. Apparently they completely got rid of the internal belt and it switched to a metal gearbox and they say it's quieter too. The most annoying thing about all these bikes is the noise that it makes. So if they can reduce the loudness of that annoying noise, I'm 100% for that. And hopefully it actually is quieter, but we'll see. And DC IPM motor, I don't know what that means. You guys can tell me. Availability is in two days from Luna Cycle. That's where I got both of my Surons. They are really great people over there. And here's a bunch of pictures. Here's a picture of the battery with a single connection port, which I'm gonna love compared to unsnapping two things on the Suron. A couple things I'm gonna zonk on this is it's got the same tires that all of these e-bikes have had this whole time, really crappy and thin. I just wish they were a little bit thicker. I mean, I use these tires. I've been using them the whole time. They're not bad. But if they were a little thicker, I feel like they'd be a little better. Also, another major zonk is the stupid handlebars are only like one inch rise or whatever. You need three inch rise bars. It makes it so much better. Carly's bike has the stock bars and you're sitting so low, kind of like a crotch rocket motorcycle. Oh. So, which is fine on the road, but off-roading, I really prefer my three inch rise bars. And I'm gonna be adding brand new three inch rise bars to this bike. It is getting shipped to my house day one. Like I said, Luna Cycle hooked me up with one of the first shipments. And when that bike arrives, I'm making a video all about it to let you guys know if it's good, how good it is, how good it is compared to the original Suron, and whether or not you should buy it. Speaking of buying it, I have some friends that leaked the price to me. And the price is, very reasonable, $4,800. So kind of right in line with everything else. There are a couple components that obviously need to be replaced on this to make it better. When the MX-5 arrives to my house, I'm gonna be making videos about those important upgrades. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna be building a much bigger jump for my house and a new trail through the woods. And I'm gonna be racing this thing against Carly on her Suron. So come back for those videos and I'll see you guys later.